Today, I'm going to remove the transmission from my Firebird. It's been making noise. I don't know if it's the throwout bearing, the pilot bearing, the clutch. So I'm just going to yank the transmission out of it and try to find out what's wrong with it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery because I'll be removing the starter and I don't want anything to short out. Because you got to take the starter off pull training out. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, removing it my own way. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean you should follow every step I do. It's just the way I'm going to do it. So let's start. First, I'll disconnect the battery. Alright, for me the first thing I got to do is remove the emergency brake cable because the drive shaft needs to come out and that cable will be in the way. It has a lock nut on it. There's actually two nuts here. All you have to do is loosen them. I don't want to let go very well. What we're going to do is take the nuts off. Kind of move the cables out of your way if you can. I'll see where I can go with this one. So the spring. There we go. So there we got the cable out of the way. So next, we're going to go back to the uh, U joints. We're going to move those. Okay, we're going to remove these bolts, and all I have here is a uh, 716 socket with a small ratchet. All we're going to do is remove these four bolts. Hey, there's one. See what it looks like. Here's the second one. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to push this forward. I may have to go get a bar for this. I will. Here's my bar. I'll put a bar in here. I'm just going to give it a light, a little pull. Just like that. Pops out. There's your drive shaft coming down. Uh, let me show you what goes on in the front up here. Hey okay, man. But you pull the drive shaft out, straight out. There you take your drive shaft out. Okay, up here in the back of this transmission. Right there. Right here where the drive shaft was pulled out. I put a plug in there just to make sure no fluid will come out. So now we'll move on to the next step. We got the e-brake and the drive shaft removed. Now we're going to remove this starter. This starter has two bolts up here. We're going to take those two bolts out. The starter will drop down and then up up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. I doubt it. Let me get it down a little bit. But there's a couple nuts up here we have to remove for the wires. So let me get this dropped down a little bit and I'll be right back. All right. Two bolts are out. The starter's dropped down. Yes, I kind of got it sitting on here. Here are the bolts. Got to take these nuts off, take the wiring off, and then drop the starter out of the way. All right. There you go. Wires are disconnected. So now the starter will come right out. Okay, I've got the starter out. So now I'm just going to support the back of the motor. You're not going to crank the motor up. You're not going to do anything crazy. I've got a two by four on here with a rag around it. And all I'm going to do is just put a little tension on it. That's it. No more. I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to remove this cross member. And this one's held in with two bolts on this side, two bolts on this side, and the two bolts going up to hold the back of the tranny. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this cross member. member down well I took the cross member down evidently my camera shut off so there's just two bolts here two bolts over there and two bolts here and it'll come right out so I've taken that down so now I'm going to disconnect the linkage for the shifter and kind of get this out of the way my plan is not to pull the shifter out of the car because I don't want to take the center console apart. So I'm going to try to basically rig it up so it stays in the car and just kind of hangs here as I drop this transmission. That's my plan. Hopefully it works out. We'll see. Uh, so let me get this stuff off and see what we can do from there. First, got to remove this uh, reverse lock out bar We could probably just leave that over there where it is. All right, now we're going to take linkage ones off.
shifter linkage that is. figure out a way to keep this up there without falling all the way down but first I'm going to take off this uh, speedometer gear this cable Nine sixteenths at the top and a nine sixteenth at the bottom to actually take this linkage off the transmission here. Okay. See if we can't get this down. Okay, that bolt's loose. Should stay up there okay. we're going to leave this hang because I do not want to pull my center console apart okay all right now I'm going to go get a transmission jack in here to take the weight off this tranny back in okay, a show you my little setup here I've got my uh, transmission jack under here right now it is supporting the transmission just taking the weight off from it I loosened up my uh, four bolts. Let me see them here. I can't, right here. I loosened these up prior to putting the jack underneath it. So that way they're, if I put the jack in the way, it ain't gonna be in the way of getting these nuts out, or the bolts out. But they are loosened. As you can see, they're about ready to come out anyway. So what I'm gonna do is wrap the chains over the top of this before I actually pull all the bolts out and kind of like secure it this bolt, same thing. It's loose, it's ready. All of them are loose. So let me get the chain on here and I'll pull these bolts out and I'll lower the transmission down. Back in a sec. All right, I've got the transmission jack secured to the transmission. I'm gonna to try to pull that back my way. Hopefully it'll slide right out of there and I'm gonna bring it down.
There she came. There she goes. Now we'll just slide it out of the way. And that bearing is tight up against that pressure plate. See if I can't release some of that pressure in adjusting that clutch linkage over there and see what happens here. Back in a minute. Okay, that throw out bearing was really tight against the fingers on that clutch right there, which is kind of funny. I guess that isn't really funny, but uh, I'm going to continue going down on this. I'm going to take this uh, bell housing off, pull it out. I'm going to check that out inside there. It, I can see where it's been rubbing. So I don't know if I got any of those bent. I'm going to pull that out and see what I got. Uh, one thing I noticed, it's kind of funny, never noticed it before. That bell housing looks crooked to me. I know it's, it looks crooked, but it's sitting in there nice and flat. I don't know if it was made that way. I've never noticed it. I mean, it works and it functions. So it's the way it's going to stay. But I'm going to get these bell housing bolts off and pull this bell housing off and go from there. There's six bolts holding it. So get these off. Okay, got the bolts out. I'll go ahead and pull this bell housing off. Yeah, sure I am. Go get a rubber mount and give it a little tack. Ah, let's see if this will work. Well, that one pin wants to hold on. like any of them are bent that's a good sign right doesn't look too bad really all right let's pull this clutch off here Okay, I have this all pulled apart now. And this uh, throw out bearing is fine. It doesn't make a sound. It's a good bearing. 
Might be a little sloppy, but it's got self-centering. You can see where it was rubbing on the clutch just a little bit. It looks like I might've got burned a little bit because it was up really, really tight. I mean, really tight. I think they are supposed to touch, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna look that up to find out. But um, over here, got the bell housing off. I think my um, clutch bolts might be a little long. I don't even think these are the right ones. I'm gonna look at ordering another set. The um, pilot bearing, it's fine. It doesn't make any noise. There's nothing wrong with it, it's fine. So my pilot bearing wasn't making the noise. My pressure plate, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. So I'm not sure, I'm hoping my noise was coming from the um, throw out bearing being against here. As you can see it left some marks. So I don't know if it was like binding or what. It, it, you can't feel them. So I think this clutch is fine. Backside. Nothing. It's not cracked, broke, nothing like that. Just needs cleaned up. So I'm not sure where my noise was coming from. Like I say, unless it was because that throw out bearing was really tied up against the clutch here. It's the only thing I could figure. Like I say, it's it's not damaged, nothing's broke, nothing's bent. I'm starting to wonder if them bolts were too long and we're bottoming out and this wasn't all the way tight where these fingers would have been pushed in, but I'm not sure. Like I say, the pilot bearing's fine. So I'm gonna go look at ordering some bolts. I don't think I'm gonna need anything else. I think this is fine. I know this front looks a little boogered up like somebody did something to it. I could probably clean it up a little bit. But yeah, up here, I don't see anything wrong. All looks good. Might be a little oil in there to clean out, but not sure if these are from the heat. Got little, little crazes in it. But it appears to be just, just fine. So, check on them bolts and uh, get those ordered, and I'll put this back together down the road. Go from there. I don't know what else to do here. At first, I thought maybe I had the wrong clutch because I was thinking I put a 10 inch in here, but it's an 11 inch clutch. It's a Napa clutch, whatever they sell. You know, I was just looking at this pilot bearing over. I do realize there's something crazy on that. Does that look like it's bent? Hammered in or something? That does not look right. The other side does. This side's got something right there going on with it. So I think I will replace the pilot bearing after all. Not sure what that is but it's definitely damaged. Hmm. Okay, new pilot bearing.